Hey guys, this is Mr. Burt, and this is our second week uh, meeting um, via video for RA. Really wish we were meeting together, um, but we're doing the best we can. The Lord has ordained all this, and so we're going to do the best we can and talk about Jesus and learn about Jesus and hopefully know Jesus and follow Jesus. And So most of you probably know that we just spent a fair amount of time looking at the story of Noah. And then we went and saw the ark, which, by the way, was really cool. Um, uh, maybe we can do it sometime in the future again. Um, not next year for sure. But it was really fun. But before we, stud before we started studying Noah, we were looking at the Apostles' Creed, which was one of the first creeds, if you remember. A creed is just a list of beliefs. It's one of the first creed that the church ever wrote, um, dating back all the way to the first or the second century. Um, so we're just going to step right back into that and do a couple lessons. But before we get into the new parts of the creed, I wanted to reread the ones we had done, which is here, which is which we can we can send this out via email. I'll get Mr. Doug to do that, so everybody has that. But I'm going to reread the first five statements of belief found in the creed, talk about them for a second, and then next week we'll step into something new. So it starts off, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. I believe Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. I believe he rose again from the dead on the third day. I believe he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. It goes on from there to talk about the living and the dead, the Holy Spirit, the church, the saints. And we're going to talk about all those in the coming weeks, either via this video or different videos or... The, uh, hopefully we'll get to meet again as, as, as RAs pretty soon, but we really don't know. But if you look at the, but if, but if you look at the creed, and if you can have it via email, if you've gotten it or if you've printed it at all, what you'll see is the very first statement says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, is talking about God the Father, right? We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all three of those persons, God, he's three in one, are in the creed. God the Father is in the first statement that we just read. The next five statements of belief are about Jesus. It talks about Jesus being God's only Son, who is our Lord. So God is our is God. Jesus is our Lord, who is also God. It also talks about Jesus. So Jesus is God. It also talks about Jesus, and the next one, it says, I believe Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. So he was not only God, but he was man. He was fully God and he was fully man. It goes on to talk about, we're about to celebrate Easter next week. It talks about Jesus' crucifixion and that, he went, and that he died whenever he was crucified. And that in his death, he was also buried. He was put in a tomb. All these things are very important to the Christian faith. And the, the, the fifth statement says he didn't just die, but he rose again from the grave. On the third day, the Bible is very specific about that. And then he ascended into heaven is what this, this, this is where we ended, uh, right, right before we started Noah. It says, I believe he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. So this is what's important, and this is what I want to make sure that you see. The first statement talks about God the Father. The next five, and the majority of the creed, talks about who Jesus is. He is God. He was fully God. He was fully man. He suffered, he died, and he rose again. Those are pivotal statements of belief. To be a Christian. You have to believe he's fully God. You have to believe he was fully man. You have to believe he suffered. You have to believe he was crucified and he was and, and he died 
He was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And there's, there are all sorts of implications for that. But, for right now, what I want us to see is the early church wanted us to see how important it was to know Jesus. And we want you, from our all the RE leaders and, the, and Coyote, we want you to know Jesus. Which is why we study Noah, because Noah pointed forward to Jesus. Noah talked, spoke, uh, for, foreshadowed the coming of salvation and the coming of Christ. And Jesus is Jesus. He is God. Jesus explains and tells us who God is because he was God. So, my prayer for you, my prayer for your families, my prayer for my family is that, is that, is that we would know Jesus as Jesus wants and desires to be known. So have a great day. There's an activity shortly after this dealing with making cane poles. So you should also see that video or it may be linked to this one, depending on um, what, what Ms. Sherry did. Have a great day. Hey guys, this is Mr. Burt, and this is the activity portion for RAs this week online, the digital version. And for the next couple weeks, we are going to actually, for this week, we're going to start making our cane poles. A couple years ago, we made some cane poles, maybe four or five years ago, and they take about a month to a month and a half to make properly. So, this week, we're going to start. You will find at the RA building, I've cut about 15 to 20 cane poles, reed, reed cane. This is, this is reed cane. The settlers would have used this. Um, this is not bamboo. You find it next to rivers. I've cut them and put them on the back porch uh, at the RA building. Uh, they're just laying there. There's about 15 to 20 of them. If for some reason you get there and they aren't there, Text me, you should have my, or your parents will have my phone number, and I will get you some more, okay? Each RA that wants one can have one, and we've got plenty of them. Now, this is a multi-step process, so this week we're only going to do one part of this. So, you'll see, this is a recane. It's about 10 feet tall. Benson, get a picture of the very, okay, see how tall it is? All they vary in range, Benson, look back at me. So they vary in range from the ones that I pick from six to 10 feet, pick whichever one you want. Some of them have vines on them. First thing you do, they are not poison ivy vines, so you're fine, I made sure that, make sure you take the vines off. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is if you look close, come here. So if you look close, there are these little branches that are coming off right here. You see them. Don't try to pull them off going up the, up the plant. Grab a hold to them about like that and literally pull down and they come right off. So the first thing you want to do is pull down and get every single one of them off. Now, if you do it over your concrete, you're going to have a mess. So throw it in the back of the pickup truck, and you'll be just fine. Okay? Now, try to go all the way to the very top. And then when you get to a certain point, it's going to be real flimsy. And that's okay, because it's real fun when you're fishing with them later you'll want to tear off that very top. Now, this is what your pole should look like at this point. Back up a little bit, Benson. Okay. Now, there's nothing on here. It's all... This, okay, this is essentially your cane pole. The next thing you'll do, you'll notice at the bottom where I cut it, it's got an angle to it. You can leave that angle on there. You can see how it's hollow. Or you can take a saw and you can saw it off. If you saw it off, it does help with that angle. It just depends on what you want to do. You can, you can jab it down in the dirt and it will stay there. You can hold it. You can fish with it. If you saw it off, saw it right below the ridge. This is a ridge right here between 
This is the growth of each year. Saw it off right there, and that'll help keep, in, keep the rod from actually splitting. After that, the last part of this activity is to go in your backyard, find a tree, and get a rope. You can get some fishing line, or you can get some smaller rope, kind of like we used last week, or you, you may have used last week whenever you tied the fisherman's knot, and take this cane, or the beginnings of a cane pole, and tie uh, the rope to the bottom side of the cane pole right here underneath or on the other side of the first ridge and literally hang it upside down in your yard or not in it can be in the edge of the woods or it can be in the backyard a tree or whatever and hang it there and leave it there for about three to four weeks and um, it it helps keep the rod straight it's what everybody says to do I've done it before and it works and um, instead of it curving and getting all um, unusable it keeps the rod straight as it begins to dry. So um, that is the activity for this week. Parents, just a word of caution, uh, when you take the, um, the branches off this uh, cane pole, your kids will try to use it in interesting ways. They, um, if you don't believe me, just sit outside and watch them use it. So uh, they'll use it as spears and as all kinds of stuff. Which So make sure you, you don't have COVID and you're not incapable of moving around at a quick pace until you get it hung up in your backyard. If you have any questions, you can text me or email me or you can um, call me. You can call me. Um, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.